Hey YouTube, thanks for stopping out at Moo Dogs Frugal RCs and more. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing of the Ghoul RC T32 foldable drone. Stay tuned. All right, before we get this thing torn open and all the, all the contents spilled out, let's take a look around the outside of the box and see what kind of information they're giving us. On the left hand or right hand side of the box uh, is pretty much the specs for the quadcopter. Uh, you have a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal that this is a Wi-Fi FPV so you're going to be using a Wi-Fi signal at 2.4 gigahertz. It's a four channel unit uh, does eversion, basically eversion is flip and roll, so it's got that function. Has LED lights on the outside. This is running a six axis gyro platform for stability and flight. Has a headless mode, return to home, and a Wi Fi connection. Uh, essentially, the Wi Fi connection is again going to be for the uh, FPV. Uh, the 2.4 gigahertz is going to be for the uh, transmitter to the uh, drone itself. Uh, the front of the box I showed you before has the folded quad. The side of the box, the other side of the box has a UPC code and then a folded red version of the, uh, of the drone which I have inside the box there. This one is red. Uh, and then on this side uh, we have the unfolded uh, bird uh, with the prop guards attached and a little bit of an action photo there. So without any, any more uh, chit chat on that, uh, let's go ahead and pop this open and see what they give us in the box. Uh, now I had this open before just to make sure all the contents were there so this is kind of like a uh, an un, a, a re-unboxing. Um, so we'll set the drone and that aside and take a look and see what other kind of contents we have in here. Uh, and it does come with a manual and this is going to be in all uh, all in English. I believe there might be a couple other languages in here. And yeah, it looks like there is uh, possibly French, maybe German as well. Um, Ghoul RC is, you got to kind of decipher some of their uh, Chinese to English translations. But it's a good idea to have this around just so you kind of get used to, uh, you know, what the transmitter does, the functions of the transmitter, the button placement, all that kind of thing. A lot of times these transmitters are not labeled, so you have to kind of uh, use the diagrams that they give you to know what controls do what. So hang on to that. Uh, it's coming with four prop guards. And I believe these just snap on, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, so I won't be putting these on today. I won't be using them. I'll show you. I'm going to be doing a tutorial as we go um, on how to assemble this as well. Um, but uh, if you guys are a new flyer uh, and uh, or you're f wanting to fly this inside the house, which I don't really recommend doing unless you have a lot of space, uh, it's a good idea to use these. Also, another bag here. And this has got some other stuff in it, and I believe this is going to be our props. So it does have four um, spare props in case you were to break one. The other one's in here somewhere. Yep, there it is. On the bottom here. Let's go ahead and just dump all this stuff out. So we've got the four spare props. These are going to be like any other quadcopter. Uh, they should be labeled... Um, and they are. You can see up on the right near the hub of this one here is an A designation. And I believe we're going to find some B's in here too. And here is actually the B. Very important again, and I'll stress this again, that you put these on the right motor arms. Otherwise your quad will not fly correctly. Uh, we also have um, some landing gear for the quadcopter. And a... Micro, or a USB to uh, micro low C or mini low C uh, 1S battery charger. This would just plug into your phone uh, wall wart or into a computer USB. Then we have our FPV uh, attachment. This is going to attach to the uh, transmitter and allow your phone to fit inside here for viewing. And you get a screwdriver to put this all this stuff together. The other part of the uh, package is going to be the drone and the transmitter. And it looks like they included a pouch with this for the drone, which is kind of cool. Uh, so you can actually uh, fold up your drone, stick it in the pouch, and take it with you. Throw it in a backpack and, and take it along with you. Kind of nice touch there. And it does come with a transmitter. And it looks like this one might be somewhat labeled. And it is labeled. You have to kind of look a little bit 
uh, has an auto stop, so uh, and it has uh, auto takeoff, auto landing. This is a um, this is a altitude hold quadcopter. In other words, it has a barometer inside uh, of the circuitry inside the quad that will uh, allow the quadcopter to maintain a certain altitude. Uh, and you can see that also by the uh, throttle stick here actually springs back to the center. So it's a nice feeling, a nice feeling transmitter feels good in the hand. Uh, it is plasticky, it is a toy, so keep that in mind as well. And then we have the quadcopter itself. So this is a foldable quad, as you guys can see. Uh, this has a 720p uh, 2 megapixel camera uh, in front here, and it is a fixed camera. So in other words, you cannot move this up or down. It stays in one position, and the quadcopter unfolds uh, thusly. There is no... Um, there is no button underneath that you have to press to, to release this arm. You just basically pull it from its, from its folded position and snap it into place. There's a really kind of a faint audible click. You guys can maybe hear that. Oh, that one clicked. Um, and we just fold that out like this, and it turns into a pretty decent sized quad. Uh, not too bad, not too shabby. Really nice looking. I like the candy apple red myself. I'm kind of a fan of that. Um, the battery is in the back here. There is a battery hatch back here. We'll just go ahead and pop that open and pull the battery out and see what they're giving us here. I'm just a little bit fidgety here. So let's go ahead and use our included screwdriver to kind of fish these wires out. And the battery's back here. That, what I just did right there, I don't recommend doing. Don't do that. I pulled the battery out from the uh, from the wires. It's a good idea to, um, to put a piece of tape over this and kind of make a little pull strip on it. And I'll show that in a later video. Uh, but we have a 3.7 volt, 850, 850 milliamp hour battery uh, with a 1S connector on it. And from there, um, the next thing I'm going to do for you guys is kind of show you how to install the landing gear um, and how to install the battery, power it up, and we'll go ahead and power up the transmitter, and we'll start the props up, and we can look at the lights and things like that. So uh, hang on one second. I'm going to get uh, that started for you right now. All right, and the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and install this landing gear. And I took the Liberty off camera to install one side already. And I'll show you on the second side how to do this. There's two sides to this uh, landing gear piece here. And you're going to have an unfinished side, which is hollow. And then a finished side, which actually has a kind of more matte finish to it. The matte finish is going to go towards the outside of the quadcopter. So that's going to be the side that's showing. And there's going to be holes on the bottom of the quadcopter here on the body and the fuselage. So you can see one up here and one down on the bottom. Inside those holes, I don't know if you can make this out or not, there's a smaller hole that this pin would fit into. And it's kind of a square-shaped hole. I don't know if you could be able to make that out on camera. But this is also square-shaped on the end, past that pin. And what we would do is set it in and get that pin inside the hole that's inside the square hole and then fit everything together. And that's basically it. So now you've got your... Now you've got your landing gear installed. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and uh, put the prop guards on. The prop guards are nothing more than clip-ons. And uh, on, the, on the prop arms by the motor pods, you're going to notice that there are some small holes. There's one on that side. And there's one, I believe... Right on the other side, right by my finger here, you can just barely make it out. And on the prop guards, you're going to see uh, similar uh, f similar to what the uh, landing gear was like. Uh, you're going to have little pins that stick out of the plastic mold here, and a little um, a little piece of plastic that sticks out in the front. Let me kind of show that to you, so you can kind of get the orientation of this. You can see it right there. All right. And essentially, all you would have to do to put these on is nothing more than just Hold the prop arm in your hand, whichever hand you are, and uh, basically just feed this over the top. Slide it down, 
and then where those pins are they fit right into these holes on the sides that I showed you earlier same thing on this side just kind of press it into the hole and that would be that uh, there is no hardware to hold these on they stay in place pretty well and uh, that's what one looks like I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the rest of them on and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done All right, and there it is with all the prop guards installed. Um, really kind of increases the size of this quadcopter uh, quite remarkably, actually. It's a pretty good size now with the, with the prop guards on. Um, good idea to use these guys if you're not, again, if you're not uh, used to flying. Maybe it's your first quad. Uh, maybe it's your second quad and you're still kind of, you've got sea legs a little bit with it. Um, good idea to have these on, especially if you're flying in the house. Good idea to have them. I am not an advocate of flying in the house. The only reason I'm not is because I don't have a lot of space. Um, I had to edit out a part uh, of this video earlier where I was showing how to fly it a little bit. I uh, launched it in my room that I'm in right now and I ended up taking the camera out. So I edited that out. It would have been pretty cool comic relief, but uh, one of the reasons I don't uh, fly with prop guards, uh, more so because I... I have some experience and I know how to operate a quad uh, safely uh, without having uh, the prop guards um, on. Uh, also, they do tend to cause a little bit, uh, add a little bit more weight to the quad and they will reduce your flight time uh, because of wind resistance and weight. Another downside to the prop guards is the fact that you're not going to be able to fold. This will not fold properly. If you're flying the thing inside the house or if you're flying it outside a lot, um, you leave them on there. Uh, they do come off pretty easy. There's no screws, so they just kind of you just kind of lift them up and pop them off, and they do come off pretty easy. So if it's something that you had to you know take with you, if you're taking it with you, you stowed it in the, in the little bag that it comes with, and you pull the prop guards off, put them on, it's not that big of an ordeal. Uh, but I just choose not to fly with them. Uh, for the reasons that I stated before. Uh, so now the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and get these batteries. Uh, I already installed the battery in the back here. Um, and I'll show you that real quick. Um, it's already installed in uh, the connector basically. There's only, only one way to connect it. And uh, you st stuff the battery in and then you stow the wires behind it and snap this guy shut. Okay, and then from there uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, bind the bind the uh, the transmitter to the quad. Uh, first thing we're going to do is um, ensure that we have batteries in the back of this uh, transmitter. Uh, when they say that this is a ready to fly quadcopter kit, it's actually only about 95% ready to fly. You do have to purchase batteries and in this case this is going to take four AA batteries uh, which I have uh, installed but I'll go ahead and uninstall them real quick and we'll kind of go through that again. Installing batteries in this thing is like putting them in a flashlight. There are some folks out there though um, and not too remarkably that haven't really done this before. They have, you know, no idea. So you have to kind of pay attention to polarities uh, on, on the batteries that you're putting in. And I'll kind of show you guys that the back to this um, actually has a screw uh, uh, on the battery hatch here. There's a screw to hold, to hold it together for more security. I don't recommend using that screw. I'll probably leave it in here uh, for now just for the video. But once the video is done and I start flying this thing, I'll end up taking the screw out because it's just a pain if you want to change batteries uh, or swap batteries to another transmitter, which I've done on occasion. Uh, but that screw uh, fits right in the back here. And then you would use your included your included screwdriver to take it out. I've already done that for just the sake of the video here. And then we'll go ahead and remove the back and install the batteries. So battery polarities uh, are printed on the inside. Here you can kind of see them. They're actually molded in like batteries in a flashlight. Not a big deal. This is going to take four double A's in order to get juice to this thing. And we'll go ahead and pop those in. Get that battery back on and we'll go ahead and put the screw back in place too just for so everything is complete here and sometimes this is easier to do well looks like I didn't get a you know what I'm gonna do that hold on one second I'll get that popped in 
Some of these kits include a uh, magnetized screwdriver. This one did not, so it's kind of fidgety to be doing that on camera. But I've got it in place, so I'll go ahead and screw that down tight. Um, and also with this uh, transmitter, there is this is FPV, so it is Wi-Fi FPV, uh, first person view, so you'll be able to um, see what the camera is seeing while you're flying it. Uh, and the FPV um, for your phone mount would snap into place up on top here. And that just sets in and snaps into place like that. And that's pretty much it. So now you've got your um, phone holder up on top. You can set your phone in. And do I have a phone to throw in there for you to show you guys? I don't right now, but that's where the phone goes. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and get that out of the way for now because we're going to be uh, powering up this quadcopter and starting up the motors to show you guys what that all looks like. Um, I'm not going to be flying inside the house like I mentioned before. I did I did launch this thing in, the, in my home earlier and I ended up taking my camera out. Uh, so we're not going to be doing that again. Uh, but there is... Um, uh, a way to, uh, to to fly this if you have a lot of room inside your home it's easier to do in, in this particular room that I'm filming in right now um, not so much first thing we're going to do to get this thing bound up is go ahead and turn the quadcopter on and on top of the quad here there's a button uh, right by the Ghoul RC logo and we're going to go ahead and press the long press that and we can see that the LEDs are lit up now and what I like about this quad and I think it's going to be a great night flyer uh, because the lenses for the LEDs are all the way through so you can see them on the top and you can also see them all the way through onto the bottom which I think is really cool something else I forgot to mention um, and if I did mention it I apologize for doubling up on it uh, but there is a um, micro SD card slot on here uh, or what appears to be now I watched a video on this quadcopter uh, by uh, quadcopter 101 his channel um, you guys check that channel out if you want to know anything about quads flying them all of that type of stuff the guy's probably the best uh, in, in, on YouTube, uh, shout out to Quadcopter 101 there. Uh, but anyway, um, he had mentioned that this is non-operative. Um, this uh, slot will not store video. So basically, there is no built-in DVR on this camera. All your video is going to be saved to your phone through the app. And there is an app that you would download either on Android or iOS called T32. Uh, and you download that on there and you could pair it up and, and all that type of stuff. I'm not going to go through all that right now. This is just basic, going to be kind of a basic um, uh, setup uh, to show you how to set your quadcopter up uh, and get the motor started at least. Uh, we're not going to be doing any FPVing. So the quadcopter is on and the lights, you'll notice that the LEDs are flashing. Uh, that's saying that it's ready to be bound. In order to bind this quadcopter, it's nothing more than just pushing the power button on it. And now you'll notice if you look at the quad that all the lights are solid and the quadcopter is ready to be launched. There's a one button takeoff and a one button land on here. But in order to get those things to work, you have to arm the motors. To arm the motors on this quad is basically just taking both sticks down and to the outside. And now we have the quadcopter uh, armed. So essentially um, what it's doing right now is what I call a break-in. And what I like to do is let this thing break in for probably almost a whole battery before I actually take it out and fly it aggressively or get any altitude with it or do any kind of real flying. Um, so it's a good idea to break these in. Uh, they are brushed motors. Um, breaking them in will, will cause the motors to last you longer. Uh, it will prevent premature failures, that type of thing. It's just a practice that I've gotten into that I picked up from flying for a while. Uh, brushed motor. Same thing with my SEMA quads, my... Uh, any other quads that I have here, uh, all the motors get broken in. The brushed motors get broken in before I uh, go ahead and fly them. So I'm going to go ahead and let that run for a little bit. Um, and um, I'll show you guys real quick here how to disarm the motors. Basically all you would do is take the throttle stick and pull it down and hold it. And the motors are disarmed. Now to unpair it or to unbind it from the quad, uh, you just hit the power button. And the lights will go back into flashing state again. And it's now the now the transmitter is not bound to the quad. And you can go ahead and turn your quadcopter off by pressing the button on top and holding it. And you're off. 
So that's pretty much it, guys. I wanted to give you guys an idea, a look at the quad, uh, what comes out of the box, how to assemble it, how to get the mo motors powered up, and how to start it up for the first time. Uh, I'm going to be doing more videos like this as time goes. I'll be getting more quads in. Uh, all this stuff was purchased with my money. I'm never going to ask for contributions. I'm never going to ask for uh, anything like that. This is all done for the love of the hobby and to kind of impart knowledge that I might have and to kind of show you guys, you know, what can be had for a little bit of money. This thing was 29 bucks with a 10% discount uh, on Amazon.com. And again, I, like I always do, I'll put the link in the description if you guys want to check this one out. Um, it's a good value. Um, it's a fun quadcopter. It's got a decent 720p 2 megapixel uh, camera on it. Um, it's got decent range, probably about 80 to 100 meters, which is more than more than enough for a toy grade quadcopter. And uh, it's just a whole lot of fun. So if you guys are thinking about getting something like this, um, I would recommend going with something on this order. Something uh, You don't have to go out and spend $1,000 on a DJI Mavic. You can go out and spend $32 in this case, or $50 or whatever, uh, for a quadcopter that's going to give you a ton of fun and it's not going to break the bank and if you crash the thing and you break it you're out 50 bucks instead of a thousand uh, which i kind of uh, like that whole idea um so that's pretty much it guys uh, my guys i thank you a lot for stopping by and, and watching the video um thank you for your subscriptions i appreciate you guys subscribing and hanging out with me um if you have any suggestions on any videos you'd like to see going forward uh, any quad copies you might like to have me check out within reason i'm not going to go out and drop you know a grand on a quad copter but uh, put the link, uh, put the uh, comments in the uh, box below. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for stopping by. As is Moodog signing off. God bless the Republic.